Good evening. I'm Haley Fieser. And I'm Austin Ashby. This is the Warrior News Channel, and these are tonight's top stories. We begin our coverage tonight with a story that we have been following for several days now, when Plus Portal suddenly went offline Monday morning. Here's what teachers and students have to say about it. Coping? I'm not coping. This is ridiculous. I don't know how to do math. I don't know. Look at all the grades I give. I have nearly 100 students, and they want me to, to average all of their grades by hand. At least every day, five students from every class come up to me. Mrs. Legeevil, do you know the average of my class in my class? No, I don't know your average in my class because I don't do math. Mrs. Legeevil, can you give me my average? Are you serious? No, I can't. I don't do math. Me? No. No, I'm not worried about it. I actually haven't entered any grades in there in quite a few months. It makes no difference to me. I'm just, you know, chilling. What about taking attendance? Have you been keeping track of that? Attendance? Uh, we're supposed to be keeping up with attendance. Wait, isn't Plus Portals the thing with the tardies and grades and detentions and stuff? Hmm. Sweet. The faculty are hoping that when the system does come back online, all the student records will still be intact. We don't want to see a repeat of the 2013 server crash, which caused all student records to have to be re-entered manually. We reached out to Ms. Heather Page, head of student enrollment, for her comments on this situation. Ms. Page has not been answering her calls, and no one has been able to contact her. Now, time for the Warrior weather update. Meteorologist Kaylee Wadlington has what you can expect for the rest of the week. Well, I'm here in Miss Maternowski's room, and as you can see, things are really heating up in here. It was nice this morning around first period, holding out at around 74 to 75 degrees, but as the day goes on, we're approaching fifth period and temperatures are steadily rising, soaring towards the upper 90s. Students are encouraged to drink plenty of water. I can't stress that enough. I'll keep you up to date as the day goes on. Haley? Wow, yes, hydration is important. Be sure to take advantage of those time between classes to visit the water fountain, and please be on the lookout for signs of possible heat stroke. It's been a big week in the world of sports. Are we losing a star player? Dakota Brink has the latest. That's right, Lawson. Earlier today, star player Cole McAdams made a shocking announcement. Let's take a look. Um, I think we all know why I'm here. I'm officially retiring from sports and the Warriors, and I knew I was promised I wouldn't get emotional, but it's never easy. I just hope that the fans and the organization appreciate me as much as I appreciate them. Thank you. Cole McAdams will surely be missed. Back to you, Austin. The tight race for first grade student president is still underway. Both candidates took part in a debate today in Mrs. Baker's class. Take a look at some of the highlights. I promise if I'm elected president, I will double recess times for students. Yeah! And establish a mandatory half day every Friday in Irena. Yeah! 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 We must put the opportunity to nap back into the hands of the middle classes. Yeah! 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 That time should be for all students. Yeah! Not just the 1% for kindergartners. Yeah! yeah! Now we bring in our panel to discuss this morning's debate. Joining us tonight are political analysts George Boyd and Jonathan Garnett. Jonathan, let's start with you. Cooper's plan for nap time redistribution has gained the approval of some younger voters. But what about the people who are worried that their nap time may go to some people who didn't have to work for it? Look, Lawson, Cooper wants nap time. More nap time, free nap time. I just don't think there's such a thing as free nap time. Look, at some point in time, someone has to be awake. I just don't think the younger students understand this. No, what Cooper really understands is that everyone has the basic human right to nap time. This is America, right? And the idea and the notion that only kindergartners should enjoy nap time is antiquated and, quite frankly, discriminatory. And that kind of thinking, it just it really has to change if we're going to move America forward. Look, nap time is not a basic human right. If you want to nap in your own time, be my guest. But we can't allow kids to run around and play video games in school just because they want to. That is a privilege, not a basic human right. Okay, let's move on. George, Alec has recently spoke out in favor of increased recess time. However, a few months ago in a debate, he stated that increased recess time may actually lower student productivity. Does he simply not care about the student performance, or is he just changed his mind on this matter? Listen, Alec is clearly pandering to the voters. One day recess is bad and the next day we can't have enough. Which is it? 
This is just a classic case of a candidate saying whatever it takes to get votes. So you're saying a candidate can't change his mind on something? As a candidate grows and his perspective changes, he also likes to change his platforms. Oh, he's growing in understanding all right, understanding what voters want to hear. All right, gentlemen, thank you for your input. We will be closely watching the polls to monitor this historic event. And the search is still on for Miss Nelson in our eighth grade science class. The entire class left two weeks ago on a trip into the woods behind the school to collect leaves for their projects, and they haven't been seen since. We want to see them come back safely, but I think we all secretly wish we were out there with them. Miss Nelson's pretty outdoorsy, you know, so I'm sure she already has a shelter made out of sticks, a nice fire going, and a spear made out of rock, too, so yeah, I'm pretty sure they're fine. School officials have asked if anyone has any information to please call the number on the screen. Let's check back with Kaylee for an update on the weather. I'm here in Mr. Gibson's room, and as you can see, things have taken a dramatic turn. Temperatures have plummeted into the lower 30s and are quickly approaching Arctic conditions. Students have resorted to using textbooks as makeshift blankets. The door handle has actually frozen over, and one of our crew members is attempting to use a freshly microwaved hot pocket to melt the ice so we can leave. I'll keep you up to date as this story unfolds. All right, you guys stay safe out there. Now we bring you a story about a problem in the lunchroom that has been growing for some time now. Overcrowding has become a real issue, and lunch monitors are coming up with creative ways to handle the situation. Take a look. Yeah, it's been getting worse for a while now here in the lunchroom. We get more and more students every year, and we're just running out of room. At one point, some of the tables had 15 to 20 students, and that's a big safety issue because we only allow eight at a table. That's when we have to really think outside of the box. to do for now until we can figure something out for next year. Speaking of problems in the lunchroom, some students have been upset with recent spike in vending machine prices. Here's business expert Carolyn DeMattis with her take. That's right Lawson, once again prices are going up. What used to cost you 75 cents will now run you one dollar. And this price hike isn't just for chips and ice cream, it also affects mints and water bottles. It sounds like this might have a long-term effect on the middle school class. Exactly. Students need to send the message to the vending machine companies to let them know what it will bear. If students stop buying the products in the vending machines, eventually the companies will have to lower the prices back down. In the meantime, here are some helpful tips for eating healthy. Tip number one, bring your own lunch from home. Bring your own lunch from home not only saves you a ton of money, but it also allows for greater variety. Sure, you have your staples like sandwiches and fruit cups, but try some leftovers from Olive Garden or Outback to spice up your lunch. Tip number two, trade and barter. Your mom packed you that gross tuna fish salad. Don't just throw it out. Try to find someone who would like it instead. And finally, tip number three, free water. That's right, folks, free water. It's located all around the school at some things called water fountains. Take advantage and let your friends know. That's it for your money-saving tips. Back to you, Haley. Thanks, Carolyn. And happening live, breaking news from outside of Mr. Edding's room. Grace Schluckabeer is on the scene. Grace? Yes, Haley. We just got a report of something major happening at Mr. Edding's room. Apparently, he's wearing a new sweater. We're headed there now to get the inside story. Okay, go ahead. Get your notes out. Mr. Eddings, people have been saying all day that you've been wearing a new sweater. Do you have any comments? I guess it is. I don't really know for sure. This just in, people. Mr. Eddings is officially wearing a new sweater. I'll stay here and see what more I can find out. Haley, back to you. Wow. We will be sure to keep our viewers up to date on this breaking news. Mm. <clears throat> An unexpected change to our programming this evening. Dakota Break has the latest. In a truly shocking move, shortly after his press conference today, Cole McAdams made this announcement. I've decided today that I'll be coming out of retirement early. I just couldn't stay away from the game. It's in my blood, you know. I can't wait to get back on the field. Uh, retirement just wasn't for me, and now you'll be seeing a lot more of me. Retiring and unretired all in one day. I've never seen anything like it. I'm sorry, Dakota. We're getting an urgent broadcast from meteorologist Kaylee Wadlington. Let's see how her and her team are doing. Kaylee? 
As you can see, Lawson, things have gone from bad to worse as we have run into high winds here in Dr. Max's room. A tornado warning is in effect from now until the end of the day. It all started when a student inadvertently kicked one of Dr. Max's fans. Apparently, the fans aligned in such a way to create a kind of vortex with wind speeds up to 50 miles per hour. Students are encouraged to stay away from windows and avoid flying debris. Lawson? Wow, it's amazing how quickly the weather changes around here. We end tonight's coverage with a chilling story. Here's Warrior News investigator Rose Nelson with a story that you'll have to see to believe. The dungeon, a rather ominous term used to describe the unfinished section of the school. Most students know it as the place we store our junk. Anything from ceiling tiles to lumber to lighting fixtures, even books, desks, and chairs. But could the dungeon be home to an even more deeper and darker secret? It all started a few weeks ago when an anonymous caller left a message on the school voicemail. Hi, I think it's gone. Uh, this is, wait, did you see that? I think I saw something move. There's something living in the dungeon. I think it might be. We tried to reach out to the person who made the call but they refused to speak to us, clearly still shaken by the incident. No one seemed to have enough information or chose not to speak out. That is until one staff member, who chooses to remain anonymous, decided to share their story. I remember it was March 25th when I first heard it. Heard what? It sounded like worship music. I was in the teacher's lounge making some copies of some busy work that I was leaving for the students while I went to Disney World. And I just had to go to the dungeon and check it out. And what did you do then? So I opened the door and the music stopped. And I swear it sounded like somebody playing the guitar. Can you tell us what happened next? So I turned to leave and then out of the corner of my eye, I saw a shadow or something and I was scared to death. But Something about it seemed real familiar, but I just turned and ran out of there as fast as I could. That's when our team decided to take a look for ourselves. Here we have an empty bag of chips in the muffin wrapper. Not something anyone would be surprised to find in the dungeon. Here we have a piece of rusty metal and a plastic pipe cap that seems to have been used as a spoon and bowl. But by far the most unusual thing is this. It appears that whoever's been making their home in the dungeon has crafted some, some sort of makeshift bed using insulation. This is one mystery we need to get to the bottom of. Is there really someone living in the dungeon? If so, for how long? And how have they remained hidden for this long? Who is it? We decided to check the security video, and when we did, all of our questions were answered. I warn you, some viewers may find this footage disturbing. We were all in shock. There was a squatter living in the dungeon, only coming out at night to stock up on supplies and returning to the shadows during the day. You may think that this would be the end of our story, but that's where you're wrong. We had a chance to apprehend the squatter, and this is what we found out. Can you tell us why you did it? Well, I'm getting married soon, so I'm trying to save some money, you know. Uh, when we were at Heritage, they always told us, they said, you're always going to be a part of the HCA family. You can come back at any time you want. So, I did. And there you have it, one mystery solved. But is that the only secret hiding in the shadowy corner of the dungeon? Wow. But you know what? I'm really not all that surprised. Well, that's all for us now from the Warrior News Channel. Be sure to tune in tomorrow for the latest. Until then, I'm Lawson Ashby. And I'm Haley Fieser. Good night, everyone.
You want some help, bro? I can go for some help. Cool.